the Florida Writer Podcast, a discussion about writing and other things. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. And today I am lucky enough to be with Dr. Emmy Vita Estacio. How are you? I'm great, Allison. Thank you for having me. Can you please give us a 60 second elevator pitch about who you are and what you write? Of course. Um, Well, I'm a trained psychologist, chartered psychologist, and I write about how to use psychology in your life, whether it's how to change your life, adopt healthy habits, imposter syndrome, fear, that kind of stuff. So I'm so passionate about psychology and making sure that psychology is applicable and can be used by the masses. Ooh, that's really nice. Uh, You also like to help people self-publish. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Essentially, when I first started writing, because I am trained as an academic, that's part of our job description. We're supposed to write books and papers and all that good stuff. And we are traditionally published. But what I found is that self-publishing is a really great way to reach your audiences um, easily and and make a really um, personal connection with your readers. So I explored self-publishing launch them well every time i publish my books and launch them myself i get the number one bestseller and people just started asking me how i do it i keep getting the same questions and so i thought okay i might as well turn this into a course in a coaching um service and and that's how i ended up becoming a uh, bestseller launch strategist to help authors who are passionate about their topics, like excellent writers and can write fantastic books, but just don't know how they're going to sell it and launch it on Amazon. So that's where I come in to help. What's new with Amazon these days? Oh, lots of new things. Uh, they, As you know, they have the Kindle version, um, paperback version. Recently, they've included hardcover um, versions as well. So you can upload your books there and, and have the, the hardcover version. And many of my students are really excited about the you know being able to put a plus marketing content um, on their books pages now. So their book pages aren't just a, a bunch of text describing their book. You can also add images and videos and just really make your your books pop to life and just really make it enticing for your readers. Well, that's uh, very exciting. I know, you know, Amazon is the the place where you're always going to look for titles. As much as I love a good bookstore, I don't have one within a few miles of my house anymore, which is really too bad. So I pop on Amazon and it's just very easy. It's very convenient. And that's actually one of the things that I help my students with because we understand that Amazon is an online marketplace and people go on Amazon to look for books. There is a search bar where people can type in keywords to to look for specific books. And I ask my students, if you tap into these keywords and really understand what your readers are looking for, then you can include these high traffic keywords onto your title, your subtitle and book description. So you're essentially using the power of Amazon as what you would say a search engine so people can easily find your books. There are many other ways that authors can use Amazon and and play around with with the Amazon algorithm to make sure that uh, that you're making the most of its um, algorithm. So it's doing the heavy lifting of marketing the book for you because the last thing you'd want to happen is write a masterpiece. You, you poured your heart and soul into writing a book and then people can't find your book. With Amazon, it makes it easier for the readers to find your book and for you as an author, you just need to understand what people are typing in those key, in, in that search bar and making sure that you have those keywords in your metadata so your readers can find you. I'm going to play dumb here. What's metadata? <laughs> metadata is your title, your subtitle, series title, if you like. Um, so those are the information and keywords that you put into the system. And if you are able to optimize your metadata, it will be easier for Amazon to recommend to recommend your book to those readers who are typing in those specific keywords, if that makes sense. So the title, the subtitle, the uh, 
series Or, title if you have a series title and also the book description will be included in your metadata and i know you've you've also published allison there are um keywords that you can put in on the system as well that would be included in your metadata too so these are like the words that you put in the system when you upload your book on amazon so the keyword system within amazon is not necessarily the same as the metadata is that correct uh, yeah the, the, so the, the metadata, metadata is the actual like the actual uh, description and the titles yeah, the title the subtitle the series title and the book description all right all right so that's really interesting and i know that you know people can run ads and do, does that help does that help to figure out how to do those well, to be perfectly honest with you, Alison, when my students ask me about ads, I would first ask them, how many books do you have? And if they have less than five books, I would tell them, look, it would probably be better for you to concentrate on growing your portfolio on Amazon before you even start thinking about ads. Because what you'd want to happen is for you to have a presence on Amazon and really understand carving out your niche and understanding what your readers are looking for so that by the time you've grown your portfolio and start looking into ads, you're not promoting just one book, you're promoting a portfolio of books that will make your ad spend more cost effective. So ads would be part of the strategy, but if you are just starting out and don't have a lot of books yet, I would encourage you to keep writing, grow your portfolio, and when you have five or more books in your portfolio, then you can explore ads so people can um, discover your books through your ads, discover a lot of other books in your series because it's there. It makes the ad spend more cost effective. And uh, in the meantime, if, if you're still growing your portfolio, you can focus on writing and creating before you spend all of that time and energy into marketing and ad spend. Now let's talk about your own writing. How did you, well, say you, you started off as an academic where you needed to write. So that's just, you know, part of the gig. Uh, and, but you're in the health and wellness space. Is that correct? That's correct. My, my background is in health and community psychology. And the difference between being in academia and self-publishing for Amazon is it's a completely different audience. Um, for us in academia, we're writing for students, we're writing for uh, fellow academics, and we can use jargon. <laughs> we are allowed to use jargon because that's part of our lingo. We, we learn that um, at the university and we, we teach our students that. But when you are writing books um, for mass consumption on Amazon, you have to be careful in terms of how you are communicating your um your, your your topic because you are not just speaking to the academics you are speaking particularly for for my readers these are people who might not have a background in psychology but would like to understand how they can use psychology in their lives maybe because they are feeling um fear they want to get on with something in their lives how can psychology help them to understand what fear is about and how and, and what are the coping strategies they can use so they can pursue their ambition. So, of course, I can talk about the brain, I can talk about neurotransmitters and conditioning and all that. But, you know, I have to be mindful that my, my readers are people who might not have a background in psychology, but just really want to understand how they can use psychology and and um, you know, so so they can understand their emotions, they can understand what they can do about fear, for example, so they can carry on and do what they have to do in their lives. So that's what I love about writing, like, um, you know, for for non academic audiences, because I I get to write something that will have practical value and going outside the four walls of, of academia. And the, the feedback that I get from readers telling me that my books help them to cope with their depression or some people will ask them it just gave me that nudge to to make my life better it's just so wonderful to be able to have that impact on people because i've written my books in that way are you able to 
when you have a new release, you know, um, create a book tour or go online and do a book tour? How do you promote your books? Sure. Um, because when I when I um, published my books, it was going into COVID, <laughs> into the COVID times. So book tours weren't possible. But the way I promoted my books is I go on podcasts like this. I make connections with with other coaches and particularly therapists because that's um, actually my my network. So I'm able to share my expertise, not necessarily um, sell my book, but I'm there to share my expertise and then plug my book in the end. And what I found was that every time I go on podcast, I would have spikes <laughs> in my book sales without me even um, blatantly selling my books. I would mention it every now and again, like I would say, this is something that I've written about in my book, or this is something that I teach in my books. I don't tell people to buy my books, but I just kind of reference my books um, in podcasts. And particularly when I go on podcasts, I would get spikes in my audiobook sales um, because these people are already listening um, to consume information and, um, and they might as well buy my, my audiobook. So for those who are listening, maybe if you already have a, a book, you could consider audiobook as well because yeah, going on podcasts or going into online summits and that kind of stuff, you can um, you know introduce people to, to that format, the audiobook format, if they would like to um, consume information through, through that format. Do you record your own audiobooks? I do. <laughs> I do. That's probably something that I should have considered before. I, I enjoyed recording my my own audiobooks, but I suppose the thing that I regret was editing it myself because it was so time consuming. Um, if I could do it all over again, I would get someone to edit it for me. And of course, I got a professional sound engineer to do to, to, to do the mastering because I don't know I really don't know what they do with that. Um, but yeah, I probably should have asked someone to do the, the full editing because I had to get rid of the ums and the errs and the mistakes that I made. Such a waste of my time. I should have asked someone, you know, a professional to do it for me. But, you know, you, you live and learn. And um, this is what I, I tell my students when they go into recording their audiobooks. If you want, you can record it yourself. Just make sure that you have a quality mic and a good um, place to, to record your audiobook. Others, just because they really don't have the time, they would hire um, voice actors to do it for them. But I say it's really good fun. And there's also a personal touch um, when you actually record your own audiobook. I don't have the experience of recording my own audiobook, so I, I can't speak to this, but I know that when I read a book out loud, or if I'm proofreading my own book, a lot of times they're not exactly word for word what is on the page. Does that happen? Did that happen to you? Yes, yes. A lot of times. So there are times when I have to improvise a little bit. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly the same word per word. And I know that there are some comedians who would do improvs. <laughs> you know, they, they would read, they would read their book and do a bit of improv in the middle. You know, you can do that. But um, yeah, there's a bit of flexibility and and add a little bit of character and, and sass, you know, if you have that sass um, if you're reading your audiobooks. But um yeah, I that that's another format that that you can include as you are um, publishing your books. But I tell my students all the time, whatever it is that you're doing, whether it's a paperback or hardcover or audiobook, um, make sure that you do um, organize your launch. <laughs> you know, have a strategy in place when you launch your book because I know um, what it's like to write a book, the, the amount of love and time and effort that we put into writing our books and we want it in the hands of the people we want to serve. And if you're someone who's listening to this, if you are a writer who's about to publish and launch a book, make sure that you have a strategy in place, plan out your, your strategy, have a launch team. We've talked about this today, Alison, optimize your metadata, really understand what your readers are putting 
in on the search bar and make sure that you incorporate some of these um, words in your title, subtitle, or book description so it will be easier for your readers to find your book because ultimately we want our work in the hands of those people we want to serve. You mentioned the launch team. How do you organize a launch team? Organizing, I get asked this so many times. It's actually not that difficult. The way I organized my launch team was I um, joined a Facebook community of authors. And every time someone has a launch, people volunteer and help each other out. So for me, before I published my books, I helped many authors um, as they go into the launch. And when it was my turn to launch my books, all of these people came forward. I didn't, of course, I had to ask for it, but I didn't have to beg for it because I helped them before and I wasn't asking for anything in return, but they just gladly helped because it's good karma, I suppose. <laughs> so you can join um, Facebook communities, um, you know, author communities. You can see people launching their organizing your launch team, or perhaps if you're a very niche, um, if your book has a very niche topic. So I do have, for example, a client who's writing a book about menopause. He would join a community for women who are going through menopause and ask for, um, you know, volunteers there to, to read the book in advance, download the book when it goes out and, and leave um, verified, honest reviews on Amazon. So it really depends on what your book is about, but you can start with joining Facebook communities for authors, see what's going on there. And if your book is really niched, then you can join those um, communities as well and reach out and ask for volunteers to, to join your launch team. Ideally, you would want to give your um, launch team at least six weeks <laughs> before you launch. You don't just say, hey, I'm launching my book. Here it is. I want the review now. No, give them a bit of time, plan it well. And for most of my students, we have about six to eight week um, period when they finish their first draft until they launch. So it does take a bit of prep work. There's a bit of um, strategizing involved in this. But when you do, when you do it right, um, the launch would be smooth sailing and it's relatively easy to get to number one bestseller if you know what you're doing. Wow, what wonderful advice. Dr. Emmy Vida Estacio, how can people get in touch with you? Okay, how people can get in touch with me. You can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook community called Self Publishing Made Simple. It's a community for heart centered entrepreneurs, coaches, visionaries. So come and join us there. You can also find me on Instagram at Emmy underscore Estasha. I do have a lot of fun reels there. <laughs> See me dancing and pointing at text and that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, the best place would be Instagram. Uh, follow me at Emmy underscore Estasha or come and join us inside our our community on Facebook called Self Publishing Made Simple. That is awesome. Are you ready to switch to our rapid fire questions? Yes, let's go. Let's go. What is your favorite day of the week? Favorite day of the week, that would be Sunday, <laughs> because that's a time where I go and play with my son. Um, fun, fun, fun. What is the most beautiful place you've ever seen? Most beautiful place I've ever seen. I've been to a lot of beautiful places and you know that I am in Greece right now, but I really cannot forget Pagudpod, which is um, at the nor northern part of the Philippines just such a beautiful location and if you haven't been there go visit it <laughs> what's that called again a good pod <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> i'm not going to try to pronounce it because it won't come out <laughs> properly all right my yeah. last question what animal would you be if you were reincarnated oh what animal would i be probably a dog because i'm quite <laughs> loyal <laughs> and just just happy to to be around you know the people who give me that fun happy feeling myself so probably a dog well dr emmy vida espacio thank you so much for coming by thank you for having me hope that was helpful oh very helpful you have been listening to another edition of the florida writer podcast with your host alice nissen allison out Ooh. we're all done dr emmy vida espacio 
helps coaches, consultants, and business owners expand their reach with a number one best-selling author book on Amazon. She is also a psychologist and has self-published many of her own works. For more information, visit her at selfpublishingmadesimple.patia.com. Join us for a weekend jam-packed with networking opportunities, workshops, awards, book signings, and a youth summit Friday, October 28th, 2022 to Sunday, October 30th. The Florida Rider Youth Summit, October 29th. For more information, visit floridariders.org. Until next time.